overlook and we gave the no raise for some reason. So this is just correcting that mistake. Those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Obviously, we all have had to sign this. So. Next one up is uh, the university extension. That's the university extension. Yep. What that is is you know we used to house them down the street that way. The building had a lot of issues. Um, yeah. And it was getting so expensive to keep that building in decent shape and start getting mold in it. The HVAC system was falling apart. So what we came up with was rather. Than to put the money in to restore the building, we decided it would be cheaper to just increase their budget ten grand so they could lease a place somewhere. Where are they? They, I don't know, I haven't gone to see it. They just got moved in about a week or two ago. Uh, is your email set up here? Mm -hmm. you, you may have emails from Michelle Kroll out there. She invited us to all come out and take a look at the new building. Okay. So that's what that is. Is it in the city? I mean, where <laughs> generally is it? It's, I believe it's in the city, but I'm not sure. And is that, how, how long is that with 10,000? Yeah, that's for a year. For a year? Yeah, we do them every year. Okay, I'll say you. I would move to approve the budget amendment. I'll second that. Those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. What's her last name? Kroll? Kroll. K R O L L. James, it's on South 5, she, she just before we get to the MMA on the right. Okay, cool. Thank you, Chris. Is that additional funding? Yeah, it's additional funding in, in lieu of the building that we used for the house in there. <clears throat> I'm not sure what we're going to do with that building. Um, from what the guys have said, it probably needs to be, at a minimum, completely gutted, if not torn down. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, okay, last one is to change LEST. Um, <coughs> the sheriff got a, a grant from the Village of Four Seasons for uh, employee raises, and he's outlined those in this budget amendment. Um, um, I would entertain a motion. I'll second that. I will move to approve it. Okay. So we've got a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. The motion carries. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay, we've got through the budget amendments. Tax On the agenda for a discussion. So um, I'm opening up uh, this particular item for discussion. And obviously, that's probably why everybody's here. <coughs> so, excuse me, Greg, is that discussion going to go in the minutes or are you going to close before? What's that? Is that discussion going to go in the minutes or going to close before? It's being recorded. I mean, if we get. I, I didn't yeah. know because usually that's not in the minutes on other business. I'm just asking so I don't know. Yeah, no, we're going to have it. We're going to have this. This is just discussion. So we're not closing the meeting. Okay. Yeah, you're going to basically, Including. I want there to be a record that we're having a <coughs> general discussion with regard to this proposed ordinance of a constitutional Camden County. Well, it, it was Charlie. I don't know if you saw Charlie's revision and then my resolution, but the part dealing with the Second Amendment was... I wanted that to be an ordinance. Okay. 
Uh, is that, you is that the only part we changed was the Second Amendment section? No, uh, I, there was some of that. Um, added, individuals have the rights to refuse directives or recommendations to take any vaccine associated with COVID-19. Um, no business, church, or organization can be shut down due to COVID-19. Keep in mind, these are resolutions. Mm -hmm. well, you, what, would it be difficult for, to, to just read the whole thing to folks? I'm sure most of them have seen it, but... I can do that. Would anyone like to hear it? In its original format. Yeah. 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 Right. All right. I just say here. You're <clears throat> so this is a, a little bit of a combination of the part that uh, kind of a compromise, I guess, from Charlie and me. I don't did you guys look at the original at all? Yeah. Okay. So you know what that said? And yeah. then Charlie's was uh, pretty much very similar, but uh, it didn't have anything pertaining to like shutdowns to COVID and vaccines and gun rights, which I thought were what the incoming administration people wanted. So I made sure to uh, add those because other than that, it was not at all what I had put forth. But I mean, so there's a lot, you know, that here's number one, all government of, of right originates from the people. All persons have a natural right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and the enjoyment of their gains of their or of their own industry. All persons are created equal and entitled to equal rights and opportunity. All individuals have a natural, natural and indefeasible right to worship Almighty God or not, according to their own conscience. Uh, no authority can control or interfere with the rights of freedom and conscience. Uh, no person. Past impairing the freedom of speech, but every person shall be responsible for the abuses of this freedom under the principles of slander. Libel, libel and slander. So, I mean, that just seems like I would probably amend that to be that no law shall be passed in period in the freedom of speech, period. Uh, individuals have the right to peacefully assemble for their common good. No individual shall, shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. In their persons, papers, homes, and effects without unreasonable searches and seizures. <laughs> Individuals shall have the right to keep and bear arms in defense of his home and personal property. Uh, that had something to do with concealed to carry, and I edited that one. Uh, private property shall not be taken for public use without compensation. Uh, I don't even know how I feel about that. No business, church, or organization can be shut down due to COVID-19. The health department director is not an elected position, and the health department as a whole is not law enforcement. They may re make recommendations but do not have the authority to police businesses concerning COVID-19. And then the second part is from the Second Amendment Preservation Act. I couldn't get it to pull up right now, but it's in there. Um, and basically, this is the part I would like to see be an ordinance. Uh, you can look up the originator from it. His name's uh, Ron Calzone. Ron uh, All federal acts, laws, orders, rules, and regulations, whether past, present, or future, which infringe, which infringe on the right, the people's right to keep and bear arms, as guaranteed by the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, Article One, Section Twenty Three of the Missouri Constitution shall be invalid in this county, shall not be recognized by this county, are specifically rejected by this county, and shall be considered null and void and of no effect in this county. Um, and then it lists all the subsections from each part. Excuse me, James, how do you spell that guy's name? Uh, R-O-N Calzone, C-A-L-Z-O-N-E. Okay, thank you. So, 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very uh, pro Second Amendment. Um, you know, it's being proposed at the state level, and I would make a motion that we put that forth here. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anyone else uh, want to speak with regard to this particular matter? Yeah, I, I made the request, and I'd like to talk about why I made it. Okay. Um, and I made it on the proposed ordinance, not on a revised resolution. Um, the way James' original ordinance stood, I mean, it's protected by the Tenth Amendment. The power is not delegated to the government by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states. Rest with the states or the people. There is absolutely nothing in the Constitution that delegates the power to the federal government to commandeer situation would be the Prince versus United States case. Um, Brady background checks um, in the Brady Bill, and it mandated that local law enforcement must use their own resources and personnel to run FBI background checks on anybody purchasing a gun. Um, Jay Prince, the sheriff of, I believe it was, Ravelli County in Montana, challenged that um, and said, I'm not using my men, I'm not using my resources, I'm not using my county taxpayer dollars to enforce your federal program. The Supreme Court agreed with him. Um, That's P-R-I-N? That is um, Jay Prince of... Can you spell it? Yeah, P-R-I-N-T-Z. And he was the sheriff of Ravelli, R-A-V-E-L-L-I County in Montana. I will, yeah. and I will say in the original language, it was more kind of thinking if we didn't have somebody like Tony Helms as sheriff, you and know, our children's children. We won't eventually. We right. got Tony now. So and we're lucky. You know, <laughs> well, I guess we can cross that bridge when we get there. But I, I get where they might have an issue with it as far as like they would have to report. I mean, I've talked to Tony about it a lot, Twitchell. Um, I get where they're coming from on that, and that's why I completely took all that out of there because, you know, right now we do have a Tony Helms, so. Yeah, we do. But the, the cool thing about the Prince versus U.S. case is right now, because of that case, 13 states don't participate in the next background check system. They have their own state level system. Um, you know, and I know one of the concerns that, let's address the 800 pound gorilla in the room here, and that's federal funding. You know, I know there's concerns that if we enact something like this, the federal government will say, nope, Tony, you can't have any grants for law enforcement. Okay? Um, I'm not 100% positive, but in April of 2020, just recently, um, what this ordinance is is not really any different than the, the illegal immigration sanctuary cities. It's really not. You know, it's just instead of protecting illegal immigrants, we're protecting rights. Um, and there was a case that went in front of the U.S. Court of Appeals, 7th District, um, where President Trump was attempting to withhold funds from immigration sanctuary cities. Um, the court ruled that requirements for enforcing federal immigration law could not be tied to law enforcement grants. So I have to assume that there couldn't be any requirement on Tony, you know, to do this, that, or the other thing and tie it to the law enforcement grants, but that's something that we would need to check out. Um, you know, in the end, we're, we're in trying times right now. We have a very liberal administration coming in. Um, that signaled that they want mask mandates, that signaled that they want vaccine mandates, that signaled, um, you know, massive gun control. Joel Biden's gun control policy page was like that long. We will not pass a mask mandate in Cameron County. We're not going to do it. 
we need protections against any federal mandate that might come. Well, I say pass protections. Don't tell us what you're not going to do. Pass protections. I mean, you guys did shut the county down on the advice of the government here last April. So. We need guarantees. Yeah. But if it's a federal mandate, you don't have a choice except to put it back. Right. The, the federal government doesn't really have the power to pass a national mask mandate. Yeah. Only that will only come. <laughs> they didn't have the power to ban bump stocks either, but they did that. There will be a power grab. And we, we have to challenge it, and this is how we challenge it. We're just preparing for what you're hearing the same way. Yeah, I understand. We just fled Biden's Delaware. I think this is a great thing that we can do to protect ourselves because I don't want any one of you to have to go through the hell we just went through this last year. We lost our businesses. 60% of all small businesses in Delaware are gone. Mm -hmm. We had the food, distri food distribution chain completely bumped off. We were standing in line for four hours straight to get food for our families because the shelves were empty. Guys, I can't even explain to you what the rest of this nation is going through right now. If there's anything we can do to protect us from having to do that again and from any of you having to go through what the rest of this world's going through right now, and we need to do it. Amen. If I might add, not only is the anti-commandeering uh, laws part of, um, and that's absolutely the way it should be, the federal government cannot compel a local authority to enforce federal law, but also anti-commandeering also comes around to where what the local authority is willing to do and I think that at this point, the Second Amendment Preservation Act that is going to be passed in, uh, in, in Washington or Jefferson City, uh, the sheriff here has been given a copy of it, so the sheriff's around and they're following the other counties. So you can ask him what he thinks about it. But in that, in that uh, uh, provision, there is a, uh, there's a little teeth. If a law enforcement officer in the state of Missouri were to enforce federal law, they could be uh, held accountable for a misdemeanor and could be denied to ever be a law enforcement officer in the state of Missouri again. And I have to tell you, folks, as, as good as our law enforcement officers are, there are a bunch that are not that good. And they do want to use these federal laws, and they'll use them against us. And the bad part about taking any federal money or starting to get in the, in the hands of the federal government, taking their grant money, uh, helping them enforce laws, they now can control and tell you what to do. And that is one of the biggest things we have to prevent. And I believe that something like this right here in Camden County will not only tell uh, other the federal government and other officials that this is the way we see things should be and also tells our local officials what it is that people actually want and uh, that is also what we're seeing is to ensure that not only because again there's going to be a change of sheriff you know x amount of years down the road whatever this is going to happen so we need to have these proactive things in place that will help protect and secure camden county and i would uh, hope that you uh, pass um, what Mr. Gohagan has brought forward, probably in its original provision. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, I would add that there needs to be teeth in that ordinance that if any local Camden County official, in case SAPA doesn't get passed at the, at the uh, state level, that any local law enforcement officer that assists in federal uh, law enforcement of, of gun rights uh, be held accountable yes. and uh, be removed from office or removed from their position. Okay. Uh, anyone else, folks? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> I wasn't going to say anything, but I'll jump in. Looking at this, there's, I think there's some issues here that people don't want to address. And one of the concerns I've seen is people are saying, oh, my God, what are we going to do? We're going to turn around and give all the power to our commissioners. Couldn't be further from the truth. If I'm not mistaken, you all took an oath, right, to uphold the Constitution of the state and the federal government. That's really all this is. We're asking them to put in writing that they're going to protect our rights as citizens of Camden County. We're not asking them to change anything about the Constitution of the state or the federal government. And I want to go on to say that this is not uncharted territory, folks. I mean, I've done a lot of research on this. Illinois has a huge problem. All of the money goes to Chicago. We know that. And yet all the money is generated south by all those farmers, all right? And what they've done, if you look at it, I think there's 22 counties in Illinois that have passed this same kind of ordinance. 
And they did it specifically because they're tired of Chicago telling everybody down in Springfield and all these other areas of, of Illinois, here's where your money's going to go, here's what we're going to do, and we're going to enforce these laws just because we feel like this is what we need. We being Chicago, not the rest of us. And they're using the federal government as well. Also, a lot of you remember when they had the big gun grab taking place in Virginia? Those counties there did the exact same thing. Tony, I'm sure you're familiar with it. And those counties went ahead and applied to be sanctuary <coughs> counties specifically dealing with the gun issues. So the bottom line is here, folks, our Constitution gave us certain unalienable rights. We have a Bill of Rights that specifically lists those things that are protected. Okay? And only thing, only addition I could make is, and this is an issue you might you guys might want to look at, is we're listing these things. Our forefathers ran into the exact same problem. They got to the Ninth Amendment. You know, we had freedom of speech, religion, right down the line. They got to the ninth one, and James Madison stood up and he said, Hey, he said, there's going to be things come up in the future we don't even know about. And there's, you know, if we continue this list, it'll go on forever. So that's why they came up with the Tenth Amendment and said if it's not in there, by God, it goes to the locals. All right? It's not in the 